your career? Well, obviously, this was the biggest win of my career. Um, you know, it seems like the UFC was was building up Pettis a little bit. Um, you know, this was the fight that I had been praying for for years since I got into fighting. I wanted a guy who would be able to, to bang with me after I hit him on the feet. You know, he went for a couple little takedowns, so, so did I. Um, it was just part of the fight. Um, obviously, this is a huge, huge W. Knocking out a Pettis isn't easy for anybody. You know, only one other person has finished him before me, and I'm the first one to knock him out. So obviously, this is a this is a huge win for me. This is a huge uh, wave that I tried to make in the flyweight division, and, and hopefully, I can keep climbing from here. Brian, talk about a little bit of the fight. You know, the first round, obviously, Sergio was a little bit in control. You were able to counter that in the second round. Your thoughts? Uh, right, first round, you know, he may have he may have got me started a little bit early. Um, you know, he hit me with a couple of good right hands. Uh, you know, he's a little bit faster than I expected. Um, a little bit more powerful than I expected too. Um, you know, I think it was just it was a little bit of the ring rust. It was a little, you know, I haven't fought in 16 months. Um, so, you know, I needed to get punched in the face a little bit. I needed to get woken up a little bit. Um, so, you know, the first round was rough. My face is telling it right now. The first round was definitely rough, but I listened to my corner in the second round. They were telling me to pressure forward a little bit more, um, you know, to start throwing more combinations, to ease up on the power a little bit. And I tried to listen, you know, I was walking forward, I was pressuring forward. He went for a couple little more takedowns, but, um, you know, I tried to just focus and put myself tunnel vision and get in the zone. And, you know, I just started walking forward with heavy hands combinations. and. You know, it happened. Finish talk, happened. Talk about the left hook that really sounded really. You know, the left hook, uh, I've been boxing for a long time. Um, you know, I even opened a boxing gym of my own and started training amateur fighters, um, you know, for the past couple of months this year. So, um, you know, my, my punches are definitely getting more crisp. Um, it took me a little bit to let it start going. Um, but, you know, I've been working on my money shots. I've been working on those bombs for a while. Um, my idea of a fight is to be able to throw heavy shots the entire fight with combinations without getting tired necessarily. I want to be able to throw punches like that consistently for the whole fight. And, um, you know, I've really worked my ass off for this fight and it paid off. Brian, talk about the feeling here fighting American Airlines Center in Dallas. You're fighting out of Dallas. Talk about uh, the feeling you got of uh, being there in the afternoon. You know, I came to UFC 103 when Vitor and Rich Franklin were here, and uh, I sat in the nosebleed section. I never in my life did I think that I would be in this, this spot, and I would be the one getting my hand raised, and I would even be at the American Airlines Center. If I ever thought I was going to be in the UFC, I figured I'd be corner somebody here. Um, you know, I can check off something on my bucket list. I can check off one of my lifetime achievements, because this is a dream come true tonight. Does this fight really put you on the map, do you think? You know, I hope it does. I hope that first round wasn't too rough and uh, people aren't just thinking that I got a lucky shot because, um, you know, these are the fights that I like. These are the fights. I like guys that like to hit and get hit back. Um, you know, I love to fight on the feet. I love to fight on the ground. Um, you know, I love the high pace. I've had nothing but high pace fights in my whole career. Um, whenever I smell the blood, you know, I'm a finisher. I go for the kill constantly. Whether it's on the feet, whether it's on the ground, I'm constantly attacking when I can smell the blood. Um, you know, this is this is just this fight was is an ultimate dream come true for me. This is this is a lifetime achievement for me. And hopefully from from here on, you know, I made some waves in the flyweight division, and I can keep climbing from here. Um, you know, I want to make a career out of this. I'm young enough, I can keep going, and there's plenty of guys in the flyweight division that I can take out. And I feel like I just took out one of the top guys. You know, in my opinion, they were trying to build Sergio up to give. You know, I think it would be a UFC's dream come true to have two brothers as a champ. I think anybody knows that. Um, they would love for having Anthony and, and Sergio as the champs, but, you know, I just shut that down tonight. Take us through the last, when, when the fight was stopped. You're banging on him, and then do you see the, do you see the ref call him out? Are you kicking in the process of when he's, when he's trying to pull away, or how, 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 what's going through your mind? You know, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta take that one back. I obviously, I, I lost a little bit of control in that fight. Um, but you know, this is part of the sport. We're supposed to be able to lose control. You know, we're supposed to be able to like to hit guys. Um, I'm not saying that that was justified whatsoever. That was completely uncalled for. And it was a shame on me for doing that. It makes me look bad. It makes my gym look bad. It looks bad for the sport. Um, but all I can say is, is in that moment when it was happening, I obviously saw that I clipped him. Um, I went in for the finish and I had him on his back. And you know, it really shocked me how long the referee let it keep going for. I think he gave him plenty of chances to keep coming back. And even when he turned over and he turtled up, I was still, I was hitting him and I was still kind of like, where's the ref? Because you know, he was, he was done. I've had a lot quicker finishes than that before. Um, so you know, I was really surprised. And by the time the referee jumped in there, I was just in kill mode. And, and you know, the kick was just, 
I guess I soccer kicked him or I, I, I kicked him in the butt or I don't even know where, where I hit him. I guess I kicked him in the butt. So at least it wasn't in the head or something, but um, you know, it was completely uncalled for. And I have to apologize to the UFC. I have to apologize to the Athletic Commission. Um, you know, that was my mistake and, and it'll never happen again. And I have to learn from it now. And I'll see, see what happens and what the consequences are from this because you know, I'm sure that there's something coming. Did Sergio's, um, did his hook, did it hurt you at all? You look at they both connected on um, TV. You know, I don't even remember. He, the only time I remember one of his punches that kind of rocked me a little bit was in the first round. I think I went in for a real ugly punch. Um, I, I was having trouble composing myself cleanly the first round. Um, I was kind of losing my, my balance on a couple of punches, on a couple of hooks. Um, I think the first round was the only one where I really felt something rock me a little bit. Um, other than that, the second round, I was in the zone, you know, I'd already had my bell rang a little bit, so I was just, I was hunting, I was just hunting in that moment, um, you know, I didn't even know that when, when, the, when he went down, I was kind of like, oh, which punch was that? Um, so, you know, it was just in the moment, and it wasn't like it was exactly planned out, it was just part of the fight. Last question. Uh, with the win over Sergio Pettis, a prospect like that, where do you think this puts you? Is there, is there a name that you think is a logical next choice for you? Uh, not, not really at this point. I've had a pretty long layoff. I don't want to necessarily call anybody out um, this early. Hopefully, you know, I, keep, I get another fight like this. I would like to fight another striker, um, strong guy. I would, you know, I'd like to fight another up-and-comer, but, uh, you know, I'll take whatever blessing the UFC will give me. Um, I'm happy with whoever they give me. I'm ready to fight whoever they give me. I thought they were going to give me a wrestler for this fight originally, and for the past year that I've been out, I've been training my ground, I've been training my grappling, getting prepared, because there's a lot of wrestlers in the flyweight division. Um, there's not a lot of guys like Sergio Pettis or myself. Um, I have a little bit more wrestling base than Sergio does, but obviously he's been working. He went in for a couple of takedowns. I think he got me down one time in the first round. Um, you know, so he's been working, but you know, in a sense, most of the flyweights are, are pretty much the same fighter now. Everybody's getting good stand-up. Everybody's getting good ground. Everybody's getting good wrestling. So, um, you know, I'm prepared for whoever they give me. Congrats on the work.